Good evening and welcome to the December meeting of the Beaver Creek Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, Ms. Gill, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Clunan. Present. Mr. Bala is absent. Mr. Esman. Here. Ms. Piddle. Here. Mr. Archibald. Here. Okay. Um, since uh, Mr. Botla is missing, I will entertain a motion to excuse him. So moved. We have a motion to excuse. Do we hear a second? A second. Okay. Uh, by voice vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Mr. Botla is hereby excused. Um, uh, approval of the agenda for tonight. Um, do we have any changes, edits, suggestions? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written. I move to approve it. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Uh, do I hear a second? second? Okay, we have a motion to, to approve and a second. Uh, by voice vote, all in favor of approving the agenda as written, say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, uh, the agenda is hereby approved. Okay, um, minutes. Minutes from a most recent me <laughs> meeting, which is uh, unusual. <laughs> Hopefully, all the uh, all the board members have had a chance to review the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, any corrections, delet deletions, additions to the minutes? Nope. No. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. Okay, we have I'll a second. motion and a second uh, by voice vote. All in favor of approving the minutes from the October 9th meeting uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the minutes from October 9th are hereby approved. Okay, uh, we have one item of business on the agenda for today, uh, and that is public hearing V24-5, uh, Catherine Woodruff. Woodruff of 3104 Bonnie Via Lane. Uh, Ms. Gillow. This is case number V24-5 on an application filed by Catherine Woodruff, 3104 Bonnie Villa Lane, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45431. Requesting a variance from Chapter 158.104A, requesting permission to construct an outbuilding partially in a side yard, and a variance from Chapter 158.104H, to install a 500 gallon propane tank in the side yard. The property is located on the northwest corner of the intersection of Bonnie Villa Lane and Crystal Marie Drive, further described as book four, page eight, parcel 159 on the Greene County Property Tax Atlas. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Funk, can we, would you endear us with the staff presentation? Thank you, thank you Mr. <laughs> Chair board uh, so today we have uh, before us a variance request uh, v24-5 for 3104 bonnie villa lane um, so basically uh, it's in um, basically um, sorry it's in the uh, fair estate uh, fairly estate subdivision and um, so this is the applicant's house so this is going to be our basically our classic drive through here so that's the applicant's house coming into focus on the on the right. So I did take a couple shots. This is, um, again, from the west side of the house. You can see the existing shed and propane tank in the back. Uh, this picture is kind of a little more along the lines of down the property line. Um, it's hard to see, but there's some utility um, boxes in, in the back, and kind of the property line comes out kind of near the uh, fire hydrant there, so you can kind of see the, the, the shallowness of the... Are we looking at the rear yard or the side yes, yard? Yes, I'm sorry, the rear yard, yes. Thank this you. The side opposite Crystal Marie. 
Um, and this is the other side. Um, this is looking from Crystal Marie into the back at the at the same uh, shed there. Um, so, in in talking about this variance request, I basically want to go through a give you a little bit of background uh, as far as our code. So prior to 2009, we basically in the pink area is basically where sheds had to be located. Um, it was a 50 foot radius, had to be 15 feet from each side property lines. And um, in the, say pre 2009, the applicant actually could have put their structure, they're requesting a 24 by 36 structure. But in 2009, due to basically we were getting a lot of requests and stuff for more flexibility in the code to allow more areas for sheds. So in 2009, we actually modified the code to allow basically sheds, depending on where the front door was on a corner lot, this is only for corner lots, um, depending on where the front door was, it could basically be opposite the front facade. So in this situation, in the applicant situation, basically the kind of the brownish looking bar and the, the green little rect uh, rectangle there and the, um, and the brown is basically the, with the front door facing Crystal Marie a, which is the purple and, and green, is basically if the front door is facing Bonnie Villa, is how it would lay out for this parcel. In the applicant situation, the uh, front door is at and on the Crystal Marie side. So the so the the area that the applicant has to put a shed is basically in this yellow um, and the yellow rectangle. There is the space that, per the code, the applicant is allowed to put. A, um, an accessory structure. So the applicant is proposing a 24 by 36 square or 24 by 36 uh, detached structure that you know obviously is not going to fit within that you know yellow uh, uh, rectangle. Um, so when we were looking at this, basically, um, I'm not sure that the applicant's current shed could even fit within that. You know because the 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 uniqueness of this parcel is the the shallowness of the lot, because going back to this other, this other slide, basically if the applicant's house was oriented the other way, they would obviously have plenty of room to put the accessory structure, you know, behind the house in that area of A. But the fact that, and you know, because of the narrow, the shallowness of the depth of this lot, um, basically they're left with, you know, a pretty narrow strip um, of roughly about 10 feet. Uh, to 10, 12, 10, 12 feet to basically squeeze in an accessory structure. And so in looking at that, that's basically um, where we're at as far as, you know, when we're looking at the criteria, um, basically uh, the first criterion was whether the property in question yielded a reasonable return or whether there could be a beneficial use of the property without the variance. Um, staff felt like, you know, that there was nothing that would prevent the applicant from obtaining a reasonable return or obtain, you know, obtain a reasonable return uh, or beneficial use of the property without the variance. Um, and we also felt like in the second criterion that we felt like the, the variance was somewhat substantial because you know, of, the, of the amount that was being encroached in that yard. Um, but at the same time, staff felt like you know, basically because of, if I go back to that slide, um, because you know the applicant almost can't put any kind of a structure in that side yard in within that yellow area without actually uh, obtaining some kind of a variance. So um, you know while you know the variance is somewhat substantial, we felt like it was uh, you know the the ability to uh, obtain the the variance kind of outweighed that that the substantialness of it. Um, so the next criterion uh, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially offered, altered, or whether the properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result. Um, we didn't feel like the, the character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered uh, or that the, the neighboring properties would uh, suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. Um, because, you know, partly because had, had the house been oriented the other way, the applicant could have obtained a permit for it without even needing a variance. The whole need of the variance is strictly because of the of the orientation of the house on on the lot. So you know if if the house if the house was oriented the other way or if the lot was a little bit wider, uh, I mean the applicant wouldn't have needed a variance for that application at all. And you know as far as character of the neighborhood and things like that, um, 
there was concern, some concerns uh, from some of the, as you saw in your letters, one of the concerns was the design of the structure. And we have nothing that, you know, we don't require structure to be architecturally compatible with the primary structure or neighboring structure. So that really doesn't necessarily come into play um, because it, it's, not, it's not a factor that we look at when we're approving zoning permits. So that, you know, that's, um, you know, that, that style of structure would have been completely allowed in, in anyone's yard, you know, that style, uh, any of the neighbors could obtain the same style structure, things like that. So we don't think it would, um, you know, alter, you know, the, um, substantially alter the, the character of the neighborhood because any of the neighbors could have, could purchase the same structure and put it in their backyards as well. Um, the next um, criterion is whether variance would uh, adversely select the, affect the delivery of governmental services. Um, and again, staff does not feel like there would, governmental services would not be adversely affected. The next one, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restrictions in place at the time he or she purchased the property. Um, while we, you know, obviously that, I don't, we don't directly know the answer, but we do know that the, you know, the, our zoning code and things were publicly available um, at the time and the, the applicant would have had opportunity to look at those. Um, and in this case, you know, obviously the applicant, you know, the structure's not up yet. The applicant has come, you know, found out in the application of the, um, of the, um, you know, through the permitting process. So <clears throat> the sixth uh, criterion is whether property owner's predicament could be uh, feasibly, uh, you know, remedied through some other means other than a variance. Um, you know, because of the orientation of the house and, and the, basically the narrowness of the area that, you know, the applicant has to uh, put a structure, there's, there's realistically no way that you know the applicant could fit that behind the house. I mean, so there's there's no there's no um, you know opportunity for that. Um, and also, part of, I, let me back up a little bit. And in looking at this, part of the let me back up a little bit because um, this is also pertaining to the um, propane tank. So if you look at this. Uh, the applicant is um, proposing moving the propane tank up so that the, the structure can be pushed farther back into the lot, um, you know, limiting the, the, the amount that it's basically encroaching into the side yard. Um, because the propane tank would need to be 10 feet from the property line and then also 10 feet from the new structure. So that would, you know, basically almost push the new the proposed structure basically out to where the, almost the edge of this uh, propane tank is. So, um, you know, staff felt that was a reasonable uh, request given that the propane tank is required by the code to already be screened from the street and from adjoining properties. So to have a, a you know, a low profile propane tank in, in perspective to the uh, larger structure, you know, it made sense to push the larger structure to the back and then the smaller structure that's going to be screened anyway uh, toward the front. Um, so that was part of our, you know, when we were looking at this, we were looking at that in, in consideration of all that. So, um, so, you know, whether the, the predicament could be, you know, remedied through some other means that, other than a variance, you know, staff doesn't really, you know, there's, there's really no practical way to fit that structure on that lot outside of a variance. Um, and is the spirit and uh, intent behind the zoning requirement, um, is that going to be observed and is substantial justice being done by the granting of the variance? And staff does feel like, um, you know, that the intent of the code is, is being met um, and that substantial justice is being done. Again, you know, you know had, the, had their house been oriented the other way, uh, you know, we would, the applicant wouldn't even need a variance for this. It's just the orientation of the house on a shallow lot that's uh, basically driving the need for variances for both these, uh, both these things. Now, I will say that, going back to number six, the, the applicant, um, the only alternative they had, they couldn't, didn't necessarily have so much an alternative with this structure. The only alternative the, the applicant had was, uh, the applicant could actually build, let me go back to my uh, site plan here. The applicant could actually build a detached garage and put it 
right here, even with the front of the house. And it could actually be larger than what they're proposing to build now. So they could have, they could have actually built a detached garage right here without a variance. Uh, the, the zoning code allows detached garages to be located in the side yard no closer to the road than the front of the house. And so, you know, we certainly took that into consideration. And, you know, obviously the applicant, her, she didn't want a detached garage. She wanted, a, you know, an outbuilding. Um, and so, and that's, you know, why we're here for the variance. But because she didn't want a garage, which, you know, is, is understandable. Um, but we felt like, you know, this was the better alternative. It's going to have le lesser of an impact, uh, the, you know, the character of the structure that she's proposing. And not that it has bearing on the variance request itself, but, you know, architecturally it was probably more appealing than, you know, just a detached garage. So we felt like this was the better alternative. Um, as far as this, this structure, you know, she couldn't move this structure up to the front of the house, but a detached garage would. But, um, you know, staff felt like, you know, this was a reasonable request given the limited space that the applicant has to actually put a structure uh, behind the house. So... Uh, with that, staff basically is making recommendation to uh, approve the, the variance application. Um, the other thing I did want to address is um, the, the board did receive uh, three letters opposing uh, the variance request. And I did want to address a, a few of the things, you know, some of the things that were highlighted in the, um, the, the, um, the letters that were basically uh, against the variance request. One of the thing was one of the concerns was the height and size of the of the structure. Um, that height and size of the structure is not in question as far as as far as the square footage for that house. The applicant is actually requesting less than what they are allowed to have an accessory structure for that house uh, for that property. So the height and size from a from a permitting standpoint is really not not at issue. Uh, because they are allowed to have that size structure, even slightly larger structure on that parcel. So that's not really an issue as far as our concern is. The visual impact was another concern. And um, basically, again, the, the structure meets the um, size requirements for, for the size and height. Um, and one of the concerns was, you know, uh, diminishing the, the structure would diminish their view or, uh, you know, block sunlight. Again, um, really doesn't factor into this because that structure, given a different orientation of the, of the parcel, would have been allowed anyway. Um, so that's really not, uh, doesn't really have any bearing. Uh, another concern was green space. Um, and again, you know, that size structure is allowed, uh, you know, based upon square footage and everything. So the, you know, uh, um, green space really doesn't come into play. Uh, there was another concern about a fire risk. Um, the structure uh, would meet uh, side and rear yard setbacks. So, um, again, just like any other structure, it, we're not, they're not asking for a variance for side or rear yard setbacks. So, again, that's not really necessarily applicable. Uh, again, the design of the structure, we don't require structures to be architecturally compatible uh, with the primary structure or the neighborhood. So that doesn't really come into play. Um, we had mixed one. We had one person that was objecting uh, because they were. It was going to raise their property taxes. We had another person that was objecting because it was going to lower their property taxes. Neither of which has any bearing on your decision. So, I uh, just thought I'd point that out. Uh, the visibility of the propane tank was another concern. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the propane tank is going to be required to be screened anyway. So, there will shouldn't you know they have to screen that from the view of the street and the adjoining property. So that's not going to be an issue. And uh, lastly, was um, there was concern over the use of the structure. And again, we don't take that into consideration when people, you know, apply for zoning permits. Uh, the use doesn't matter. Um, you know, if, and if there are concerns about illegal uses of the structure down the road, staff certainly can address those issues if they come up. But um, the use of the structure, you know, we don't ask anybody when they're applying for an accessory structure permit, well, what's it going to be used for? Because it doesn't, it doesn't have any bearing. So. Those were concerns that were laid out in those letters, so I just kind of wanted to kind of address those up front before, um, you know, uh, just so that, you know, I don't know if that will help with questions later, but I at least wanted to kind of address those uh, primary concerns before, um, before the applicant came up. 
Okay. That's all thank, I have. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So uh, I'd like to hear from the uh, the applicant at this time. Tell us, tell us what you want to do. Hi, my name's Kathy Woodruff, and, and can you read the card up in the upper right hand corner, or left left hand corner, right left hand corner? <laughs> Hi, my name is Catherine Woodruff. I affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Beaver Creek is the whole truth and the best of my knowledge. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, I, uh, I am running, running run a business. Um, I own Busy Beaver Arts and Crafts down the street from y'all. Um, but I've run an a art business that my husband and I um, run around the country, it seems like, and sell art. Um, and I need a structure that we can store um, that has a hard bottom, so the the um, structure that is there will be removed. I don't know that we mentioned that. Um, and so I need a hard bottom, um, something that is airtight. And so that's where we are looking at building a new structure so that the stuff that we're going out to sell is um, uh, sanitary and um, not stinky. Um, so that's, that's really the purpose as, of us building a new one. Um, so we're, we're going to store the lanterns that we buy, the glass that we buy, the stuff that we're going to resell at the um, shows, um, and the stuff that we use to make our product. Um, so we're just looking at um, building a structure that we can store it in. And we're asking permission to build it in a yard or in our yard so that we can have some place to put that and maybe park our cars in our garage again because that's where we're storing it now. I hear you. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. You have any questions uh, I'm, for I'm us? sure we will have lots of questions for you. Okay. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to those after we have the, uh, the public hearing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing, and uh, I will open the uh, public hearing now for comments from uh, folks in the gallery. Uh, if anyone would like to uh, speak for or against this uh, variance request, uh, please come up to the podium, read the card in the upper left-hand corner, and uh, please limit your comments to about three minutes. I, Glenn Harshberger, affirm that the testimony I am about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Beaver Creek is the whole truth to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I'm Glenn Harshberger. I live on 2120 Crystal Marie Drive, a uh, little bit catty quarter from them. Uh, I, guess, I guess my biggest objection is the gentleman from the staff talked about number three there where it said whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered. And in my mind, it is substantially altered. Uh, most of us have storage barns in that neighborhood. They tend to be, the small ones are eight by 10, the big ones are 12 by 16 or so. I think ours is probably a 10 by 16. And almost all of them are way in the back against the back fence. Uh, maybe a third of the houses, maybe a quarter have propane tanks. Uh, they tend to be behind the house, not visible from the street at all. We're talking something here that is substantially higher and, you know, if my math's right, five to six times larger than the average storage barn in that neighborhood. That sounds like a pretty substantial, uh, what is it, substantial alteration to the essential ca character of the neighborhood. Uh, the second point that I don't think the, the gentleman from staff talked about is if you could see from the video, that yard's a sloped yard. So um, as you as you look into the side yard from Crystal Marie, that is up probably 20 feet or so, and, and I don't know the exact amount, but it's in the 15 to 25 feet range up higher than the, the street level. So a very tall structure that is much larger than the existing storage barn now becomes definitely extremely visible from the street. And you know, as you were down the street walking the dog, it's gonna be an eyesore. and, and uh, my neighbor, Mrs. Murphy, who couldn't be here tonight, also wrote a letter. It's going to block sun from her house. That's the south side of her house. She's not going to get sunlight into her kitchen in the evenings. That's, 
Um, so I'll let her her letter speak for itself. But that was our biggest objection. This the second one is the propane tank. Um, you know, again, you're moving it much closer to the street from where it is now. So it is going to be whether it's screened or not, it's still much more visible. Thank you for your consideration. Thanks, Mr. Harshberger. Anyone else from like to speak? Uh, hi, Dorothy Toto affirms that the testimony that I'm about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Beaver Creek is the whole truth to the best of my knowledge. Good evening. I am here to I request denial of this of this variance change. I have lived on my property directly across from this space for 52 years with the zoning designation of R1A single family residential. Now Ms. Woodruff wishes to be changed for her to build a commercial style building in her open side yard. If permitted, all I will see from my front yard, from my front windows, anything is a business side building. This will greatly decrease the value of my home and our neighborhood, even though you said it won't. Uh, I am sure none of you, if that property is up for sale, would say, oh, I want that to be my view for, my, for the front of my house. Um, if Kathy uh, would, doesn't have to look at this because uh, from, she won't see it from her front porch or her driveway. I will see it all, all the time. And I want to know, how will she get back to that building driveway? Those glass sheets are heavy. And what is the reason for such a large building? Now, I was told when I went to the zoning board that the person is, is never asked why they requested it, just they can do it. So I assume this is a storage area for all her business supplies. So does this qualify this building as a business or a residential area? There are many areas she could have had this constructed. Not to bring up bad, bad things, but when her property had burned and it was rebuilt, she had had that business. She could have chosen to get a variance and put that the way that would not block the whole neighborhood. Her family has lived in that particular house for 45 years, were very good friends of mine. And now I just, I don't know why I will have to live with that the rest of my life. So I wanna know specifically, what is the, the meeting of this, the, the reason for this meeting, meeting? Because when I went, the people at the zoning board told me it is already approved, so there's nothing you can say. I was told that by that. So I see this propane tank is already in the back, in the side yard. So apparently that's, he was, or the, the, I talked to a lady, and she said, oh, it's approved, so you can't say anything. Well, I am saying what I feel, because this is exactly what I will see the rest of the time I live in that property. So I respectfully ask that you deny granting this variance. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I don't see any other movement out there, so uh, I will close the public hearing, and I will open this up to uh, staff comments, or uh, board comments. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to put the written input into record, please. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Gillow. Sure. Can I address one thing there? No, not yet. <laughs> um, staff did receive three letters in opposition of the case, and the board members did receive copies of each of those. Okay. Yep. We have those in our package. Uh, no, because it's, it's already received. It's part of the, uh, it's part of the, uh, the public hearing. Um, okay, so now the public hearing is closed since we have those included. Um, and I will start the, um, the board comments with Ms. Mrs. Piddle. I don't have any comments right now. I'm ready to listen. Okay. You got to turn your mic on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
I have no comments. You, but you reserve seconds. Correct. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Clunan. Yeah, I've got a question for the applicant first. Yep, not you yet, Matt. <laughs> You'll have your turn, I'm sure. <laughs> um, our uh, last um, speaker here, she mentioned that the house had burned down and it was rebuilt. That and is I'm, correct. And I'm curious as to, uh, I guess my first question would be, when did that happen? Uh, did you rebuild it? And uh, I guess we'll start with that. Um, it burned about nine years ago, 2015. Okay. Um, yes, I was the primary that rebuilt it. My mother lived in it when that happened. Okay. Um, I own a property that um, I live Caddy Corner. I live on Crystal. I lived on Crystal Marie at that point. So um, I was served as part of the group because I lived within the in the radius of yes yeah. thank you gotcha so when you had it uh rebuilt or i guess your mother did or you, you said you I, sort of I did. led the way yes. on that yeah was the house that currently uh, sits there was is this similar to what was there before is it bigger um i had the house rebuilt for old people so like when i rebuilt it, it it's a little bit bigger because my mother felt like it was four bedrooms before she needed four bedrooms now um, a lot of the things we did put on an extra garage at that point, um, if that matters. Um, yeah, when you uh, when you went through that process of rebuilding it, did you have an idea that you might be needing? Well, that you, well, I guess for question one, that you might be the one residing there at some point. Well, and that was my point of I built it for old people. I knew I was going to die in this house. Yes. Okay. Did you have the thought of? Um, I did not own this. I did not own the second business when I built the house. Okay. Um, it was shortly after um, the house was built that we started the um, over the road art business that we go to art shows, and um, then we started. I kicked my mother out of the garage. And I let her park in her parking spot, and we took over the other two garages for the art business at that point yes gotcha. and basically the house was built on the same foundation the foundation wasn't tore up yes but we did add we added um concrete for the other garage i see okay um well that's all i have on that i, I appreciate it and i'll reserve the rights here for a second to, uh, i'm sure too can i add my comment that i was going to um no <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for Mr. Funk? Um, uh, or not yet? Not yet. We can wait. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Ashman. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Matt, this is for you, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Am I correct in assuming that the front door faces Crystal Marie? Yes. And yet it has a Bonnie Villa? address correct how is that you'd have to talk to our engineering department <laughs> okay <laughs> um, is this a substandard lot uh, no I uh, know it meets our it meets our minimum lot standard the, the, the lot is just under 20,000 square feet so I think it meets our single-family residential size and then the lot coverage is okay too by the house the ratio of lot size to house yeah we don't actually calculate that when we okay. when we look at zoning but it does we do it based upon basically if your structure if your primary structure your house is under if the lot size is under 20,000 square feet you can have up to 50 percent of the footprint of the house up to 900 square feet and so the applicant can have up to 900 square foot in accessory total accessory structures and so they they certainly are within that um, they are within that parameter so um, which again goes back to had the house been oriented the other way it wouldn't even be an issue i'm not sure the house could be oriented the other way could it? no i'm just saying if 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 there was a it house wouldn't. if the front door was on the other side oh if they just moved the door on the other side well no, i mean had say it wasn't this house it was a different house but if you know if the, na the neighbor's house across the street the front door might be facing the opposite way then it wouldn't be an issue but in their case given the orientation of the house on the shallow lot it limited them to that 
basically a small strip. Right, because um, we still have two front yards here. Because we still have two front yards, correct. So what was, what was allowed flexibility for a lot of homes mm -hmm. and their situation actually limited them. Right. Because under the old code provision, they, they would have been fine. They would have been able to get, you know, build that without a variance. But with the code change, while it did help a lot of people, hence the, the whole purpose of a variance, right? Because right. the, you know, the code itself, you know, the strict application of the code uh, given the the nature of of the lot, you know, is, is there's a hardship there, practical difficulty. So, um, so in this case, while it did help, the code change did help a lot of people have flexibility in where they could locate structures and things on the lot. And their situation, it actually limited them. Right, because so. basically we have two front yards and a rear yard that's way too small. So if you're going to build a shed, that's about the only spot you can put it. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yep. I'm not even going to reserve the right to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should not. You should have told me earlier. Matt, come on back up, please. <laughs> uh, a, a, a few questions. Um, do we have a limit on the height of accessory structures? Yes, yeah, 16 feet. And the, this structure is under that 16 feet. Okay. Um, and I didn't notice any utility easements on the um, on the layout, the, the, the lot layout. If, if there are any, there, there's none that come in. You know, the structure has to be 10 feet from from the side of the property line. So it was there was no the it would have, it would have been less than that okay. or no more than that. Um, you had mentioned uh, you had discussed the op opportunity for a um, a detached garage. Mm -hmm. um, are the requirements for a detached garage uh, substantially different than um, an, another outbuilding? I mean, like, does it have to have a, a mm -hmm. certain size or certain depth floor? Does it have to have a, a driveway uh, into the up to the garage? Yeah, I mean, if the applicant, yeah, if they, the the building actual building part of it would you know fall more under building regulation, but the, as far as the zoning standpoint. No, I mean, yeah, they could they could build a detached garage with garage. I mean, they could actually put it in the exact same spot as this structure. And if she if she put garage doors on the one end and called it a garage, we wouldn't even be here. Mm -hmm. But that's not what she wanted. You know, that's not the style she wanted, which we appreciate and we understand that. And actually, it's probably less impactful to the neighborhood. You know, as far as design, not having an additional driveway, not having all those things. I mean, aesthetically. I mean, not that aesthetics play into this, but in the reality, the aesthetics for this is probably better than a, a detached garage. You could, she could have a 16-foot detached garage that's the same size and and not even need a variance. Right. Um, so. So, can you call up the um, the the lot again? Oops. Yeah, one of those is fine. There. Yeah. So. Um, so if she if she chose to do a detached garage. Does she have to have a driveway, and does she have to have a garage door? Uh, to call it a garage, it, to meet the definition of a garage, you're, you're, it's to store cars, vehicles. So to not have a garage door would would uh, kind of limit your ability to store a vehicle in it, yes. Okay. So to answer your question, yes, you'd have to have a garage door. <laughs> but, but, I mean, is it a requirement? It, it... Yeah, I mean, you would to call it a garage, yes, you'd sure. have to have a garage door. Okay. All right. Um, and um, with this accessory structure, uh, how how much far, further forward uh, could that building come? Would the detached be? garage could go all the no, way. No, just the, the just the outbuilding, the just, accessory structure. Well, this one, I mean, any anything beyond the yellow line requires a variance. So that yellow box is the only place. So anything outside of that yellow box, which you know significantly limits the size of an accessory structure anything outside that yellow box would require a variance sure i mean but if 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 that accessory structure could be shifted closer to crystal marie the variance would be greater the variance would be greater right because you're encroaching more into the side yard that was the the purpose for the applicant relocating the propane tank was to decrease the encroachment into that side yard by moving the propane tank forward which was you know smaller had less height profile and was going to be screened anyway and then push the accessory structure back 
um, actually decrease the amount of uh, variance that was would be required uh, by making it you know more compliant you know because part of a variance you know is the, is you know the you want the least impact you know the least requests possible and by pushing it all the way back to the 10 foot setbacks from side and rear uh, you know decreased the amount of variance that was required sure but it's still it's still a variance right I mean yeah, it's still a variance so uh, you know Mike Part of my concern is that um, the propane tank being out in, in front, right? I mean, if the propane tank were to stay where, where it is uh, and that accessory structure be moved forward, I mean, is that is that possible? I mean, it's possible. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the propane is going to be screened either way. So, um, I, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if, yeah, I mean, it's, that's obviously up to the board if they want to approve the second variance to allow the variance for the propane tank. That's obviously a, a separate, you know, there's two, two variances on the table. One is for the structure and the other is for the propane tank. You know, staff at the time felt, you know, the, the lesser, you know, the least, you know, to move a large structure closer to the road would have more impact on the neighbors than having it farther back, I mean, particularly when the concern is the size of the structure. So, yep. but if, if, you know, mm -hmm. that, but that's completely up to the board to determine. Yeah, and I'm not trying to redesign anything here. Right. <laughs> Just right. asking, just asking possible questions. Sure. Um, and the uh, the screening for the propane tank, does that um, does that get included into the allowable square footage for the accessory structure? No, no, we don't calculate screening. Okay. So. Um, uh, I don't think I have anything else for you right now. <laughs> uh, but I will open it up for seconds. Mr. Clunan, I know you have questions for Matt. Yeah, you actually <laughs> took a lot of them, so I, that's, I appreciate that, so I don't have to ask. <laughs> um, I think as for the, the propane tank, I, I'd be correct when I say if it's anywhere in the yellow, it's, it's fine. Or is, are we talking about it being too close to the house being an issue too? Yeah, it, yeah. It, the propane tank has to be 10 feet from the property lines and 10 feet minimum 10 feet from the property lines, minimum 10 feet from a building. So again, to squeeze the propane tank into that yellow uh, area uh, would would potentially be a challenge too, given that you know the distance it has to be from other structures and property lines. Okay, so it'd have to be ten feet from the house, ten feet from the accessory structure. Ten so and ten feet from the property line. Looking at a that's really hard. Was that nine feet yeah. that it would have to fit? But feasibly that could be done, right? In, in that very I mean, small space. In in theory it would have to pretty much stay in the same general location that it's currently located and again the accessory structure would have to be pushed, you know, toward toward the street to to make that happen. Okay. Okay. I see. What's the what kind of screening are we we looking at here? Can, can you explain uh, what that is? We can. Uh, the applicant could do um, you know uh, natural landscape, you know bushes, things like that. I know at one point the applicant, when I met with the applicant on site, um, the applicant could probably more satisfy the, the 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 better. But one of the things the applicant discussed when we were on site <laughs> was the potential of uh, putting up a, a privacy fence around the yard. Um, and obviously, if you if she actually put up a privacy fence around the yard, then I mean, even actually, given the height of the the yard from the street, I mean, even a a shorter fence, would, you know, a solid panel fence would probably screen it, you know, just given the the view. Um, but you know, obviously, clearly, if they if she did build a, a six foot privacy fence, um, it would obviously be completely screened from anybody's property at that point. Okay. Um. I want to ask the applicant about that, but while you're up here, Matt, I won't make you go sit down again. Sure. Um, this this detached garage or accessory structure uh, concept. The so do we know for a fact? Does the code say uh, it has to have a garage door or it has to have a driveway? Well, I mean, our code we have a definition for garage, and a garage definition for garage is that it's, it's storing motor vehicles. So okay. if you don't have if it doesn't have the means to store a motor vehicle, then if you can't get it in because you don't 
have a garage door than it's... Put a motorcycle in. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, well, and, and I ask in part, too, because as I looked at the plans, one of the pages that uh, we were provided uh, seems to call it a garage. And so the, you know, I... I Obviously, I think I can speak for all of us. We appreciate the honesty of it, you know, not calling it a garage if it's not a garage. But, um, yeah, in fact, when you actually look at the main front page, it's called Cascade Garage. So it almost made me question whether a variance was even needed in the first place based on whatever our code's definition of garage actually is. All right. Um, so, uh, Mr. Clunan, the depending on what you call it a parking garage or a private garage it's a, it's a parking garage is a space or structure or series of structures for temporary storage of parking or motor of motor vehicles private garage is an accessory building a portion of a principal building designed or used primarily for the storage of motor driven vehicles boats and similar vehicles owned or used by the occupants of the building constructed on a permanent concrete foundation i think probably what most people have is a pro will be defined as a private garage but it's got to be used for motor vehicle storage or boat storage okay okay and either of those would be, you wouldn't need a variance for it, sounds like. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that's all I've got for you, Matt. Okay. I guess I'll ask the applicant my uh, screening question of what your intent is for the screening. Well, to go, on to, the, to go on to the garage question, we did go round and round with um, the city because we called in and asked about the garage thing. And my builder had called a garage and they said, oh, you don't have any problems because it's a garage. And then when we came in and asked for the application and we got denied right away, we were like, well, why did we get it denied? And well, because I even applied for it not as a garage. So um, I don't necessarily want a garage because I want it to be airtight. Um, will I put in a garage? If this gets denied, absolutely. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I will put in a six-foot fence if I get a pl or if the fence uh, gets approved. I did not apply for a fence yet because I'm not six months out, um, and so that will be what my neighbors will look at, probably more so than the building um, and the propane tank. Um, and so that is how I will screen the propane tank. That is how I will screen the building. You know, I think you've looked at the structure. Um, my neighbors are calling it a, uh, a structure of, what she call it? I don't remember. Um, a commercial structure, that's what she called it. I, I, I don't think this is a barn looking thing. I, I'm paying a, prim, a premium penny for this thing. I, I want something that I want to look at every day. I, it's, not, it's not a cheap structure. It's not a metal building. It's something that I want to look at every day. I, I didn't want to put in something cheap that I don't want to look at. So it's, it's something that I felt that would enhance the neighborhood. Um, yes, I rebuilt the house. And does it look like maybe not the rest of the houses in the neighborhood? Does it look like one of the burned down houses in the neighborhood? Yes, there's two of them. Can you drive through the neighborhood and pick them out? Yes. Um, but I don't think that I've gone cheap on anything. Um, I think I've enhanced the neighborhood with almost everything I've done. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Any other questions for me? Not for me. No. Okay. Uh, but don't go away. Okay. Uh, do you have questions? No? Do you have questions? Um, I do. Um, so you've heard us talk, toss all around a lot of things, right? Right. I, I get. Oh, and back on moving the propane tank, when Matt and I met, we met at the property and walked the property. You know, this, we talked about moving um, the structure out. One of my first things was to move the structure closer to Crystal Marie and to kind of appease the, the city, I said that I would pay, I mean, it's again, another premium to pay for the propane tank to be moved. You know, I was doing that to appease the city. Um, and now I've kind of settled into that 
you know, uh, moving the propane tank out and moving the structure back. It was to make the city happier um, and keep the, the structure as far back as possible. Okay. Um, so, um, speculation, if we were to disapprove the variance to move the propane tank, uh, would that, would you then move that building fur further forward? You know, I, there's at some point I want some backyard too. So that's where we had talked about and and now I've I've kind of settled my brain on at least this gives me some backyard like at some point I thought I don't know that the fence could go someplace else but I have to come off the corner front corner of the house for the fence so um, this gives me a little bit of a chunk of a backyard. Um, I don't have any animals right now, but if I want a dog to run, where if I move 10 feet from the propane tank out, I mean, that's, again, moving the structure closer that they're going to see it, um, you know, over my six-foot fence. So right. that, oh. that's... I, 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 I I think I'll do whatever you want. I think, <laughs> but you know, now now that we're talking about this garage, maybe I'll go that way. I don't know. I think I'll have to look at garage prices. One of the things I wanted to point out is if you would approve, not approve the the moving of the uh, propane tank, the the way the resolution is written now requires the the variance of the building to be constructed where it's shown in the plans, and it would ha it couldn't be there. So, so practically, you would be denying both, even if you, uh, because you'd then be approving to build a building on the lo current location of the, the propane tank. I just wanted to point that out because the resolution is written so that. You approve one or the, the other. The, the, that building, the, the accessory structure would be where that red square is. So that can't be built with the propane tank where it is because it's building right on top of it. I just wanted to point that out. There's your legal ease. Pardon me? There's your legal ease. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That we appreciate him every every meeting. Absolutely. <laughs> every now and then. Some meetings more than others. The, yes. Uh, okay, so, um, and I'm not sure if this is a Matt question or if it's, it's a legal question. Uh, if we approve the variance, variances, um, is she obligated then to go forward with this project? I don't think so, right? If it, no. she gets the she variance approved, it doesn't require the city's not going <laughs> to mandate not that she build force anything. Me to yeah. Build it. Right, right, right. I'm just. It's giving me permission to build it. It's giving you permission to build it, right? Yes. And you wouldn't need permission if you changed your mind to build a garage. Correct. Right. Okay. Sounds like that, according to Matt. Right. Um, I. Thank you. I don't think I have any other questions for you right now. Thank you. Uh, but I do have another question for Matt, just to, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, the fence that Mrs. Woodruff is talk, talking about building, um, what's the restriction on how, where it can go? Uh, basically, as she alluded, she, if she, she was looking at building a privacy fence. Sure. And so basically, it would have to, it would start at that northeast corner um, it'd be this close. She couldn't go any closer to the road. <laughs> Simply, she couldn't go any closer to the road than, than the front of the house. So she would have to start here, and then she would come straight across and around if she wanted a six-foot privacy fence. Um, that You can't go over 40, 48 inches in the required front yard. So, you know, so her, to answer your question, her, her fence would start here and, and be no closer to the road than the front of her house. And that would, that would be the same over here. Okay. It so, would be the same on the other side. It would, so, would have so to go over here. South from the front side or that, the Crystal Marie side of her house. That is the required, that's a required front yard? Yes, yeah, the required front yard is, is basically this, this area up right. here. Yes, going all the way across. 
So she can't put a she can't put anything larger than a 48 inch fence in that area. And there's also or, a required front else. yard on uh, Bonnie Villa, right? Right. Yeah, that's why I said it's basically where that um, yellow line is. Yellow line is is basically the same. You, she can't come any closer with a six foot fence than the house on Bonnie Villa side or the Crystal Marie side. So she could come here and come straight across and go all the way around and then come straight across here and close all that with a six foot fence if she chose. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Anybody else for seconds or thirds? Maybe just one clarification. Sure. The screening on the propane tank has to be a solid screen. Uh, we, we allow vegetative screens as well. But it would have to be, it'd have to be the vegetation have to be solid enough where you can't Right. I mean, the, the intent tank. is to, you know, just to lessen the impact of the, the So it would have to be some sort of an evergreen living screen. Something, yeah. Something along those lines. But if lines. she had the fence, she wouldn't need the If she had the fence, correct. that would be the screening, yes. Correct. Which is what the intent is, yes. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I will entertain a motion to either approve or deny the, uh, well, let's see, make sure I'm saying this the right way. Uh, uh, are there two variances? Yeah. There are two. One's to install a 500 gallon propane, and the other one is to construct an outbuilding partially in the side yard. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve or deny uh, the, uh, I guess, the propane tank first. I'd make a motion to approve the variance request. Okay. We have a, uh, the propane tank variance oh, request? Yes. Propane. Okay. okay. Uh, we have a, a motion to approve. I will second the motion. Okay. Uh, upon the, because of the consideration of the criteria set forth in our report. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He remembers. <laughs> I did. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Gill, will you call the roll for? Mr. Esman? Yes. Ms. Piddle? Yes. Mr. Clunan? Yes. Mr. Archibald? Yes. Okay, uh, now I will entertain a uh, motion to approve or deny the, um, uh, the variance for the accessory uh, outbuilding. Based upon careful consideration of the criteria set forth in staff report, I move that we approve the, we approve the variance. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Okay, we have a motion to, and a second uh, to approve the variance request for the uh, outbuilding. Ms. Mm -hmm. uh, Gillow, will you call a roll again? Ms. Piddle? Yes. Mr. Clunan? Yes. Mr. Esman? Yes. Mr. Archibald? Yes. Okay, um, that said, um, We've approved your variance request, both of them. Um, Thank you. I think you have a lot to consider <laughs> based on <laughs> the input from the neighbors, based on a discussion of the board. So um, uh, before we adjourn, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to um, wish everyone, uh, community members, board members, staff, a uh, very happy and safe holiday season. And um, we'll see you all in a new year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn this fine meeting. Uh, all in favor by voice vote? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Nick.